Well, my first love has always been the railroad. I was about five years old when my grandmother took me down to the Lehigh Valley and Reading Railroad Depot in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And that big steam locomotive came into town hissing and a growling and a snarling and smoking. It was a black monster if I ever saw one. My heart leaped right out of my chest and right into that engineer's lap. And from that day forth, I've been in love with railroads. I was a locomotive engineer here on the VNT. In fact, I got my steam locomotive certification here on the VNT. And then for 19 years, I was a locomotive engineer out in Ely on the Nevada Northern. That was really significant because that was an original railroad that hasn't changed in all those years. And so being able to run original steam locomotives like engine number 93 and engine number 40 was almost like going back in time. But for a young man like me at the time, it was a dream come true. It's hard to picture what Nevada would look like today without the railroads. The railroads played a very significant part in the settling of this state. And the reason is what brought the railroads together was mining. And so the Nevada Central, the Eureka Palisades, the uh, Nevada Northern and Ely, all those had a significant part to play in the settling of Nevada. And so it was up to the railroads to be able to transport the, the ore to the places where it was going to be used. And so for that reason, the railroads like the Eureka Palisades, the Nevada Central, the Nevada Northern and Ely, and here, the Virginian Truckee, very significant to the settling of Nevada. And that hasn't changed much over the years. I think we've lost track of, no pun intended, of how, how significant the railroads were and still are. There are no short lines left in Nevada other than the Nevada Northern and, of course, the VNT. I would be hard pressed to try to explain to you what Nevada would look like today if the railroads hadn't existed back then. If you notice, all the towns that were settled along Interstate 80 were built by the railroad. You had St. Reno, you had uh, Lovelock, Winnemucca, Imlay, Battle Mountain, Carlin, Elko, Wells, all those towns were built by the railroad. And if you notice, you go across Interstate 80, all those towns are exactly or less than 100 miles apart. And the reason is back in the age of steam locomotives, they had, they had to go 100 miles before they needed to be serviced. And so that's why the towns are less than 100 miles apart. But during World War II, there were 22 passenger trains a day passing through Reno, and that doesn't include freight trains that were uh, necessary for the war effort. There were trains constantly through uh, Reno at the time. It was in the 1930s that gaming and, uh, and prostitution were legalized in Nevada. And so soldiers on their way to the war effort, either from the west coast to the east coast or vice versa, they all had to stop in Reno, and most of them put a lot of money in slot machines. And so, yes, it helped our gaming uh, industry very, very significantly. But it also brought people who came through here after the war decided to settle here. Getting products where they need to go quickly and efficiently is vital to our economy. And here in Nevada, we continue to make this a top priority. That's why the Nevada Department of Transportation has developed the Nevada State Freight Plan, our state's first comprehensive multimodal plan. Well, the freight plan will help Nevada in diversify the economy and also strengthen our competitiveness, make our freight system safer. The freight plan includes strategies and projects to help further integrate freight carried by trucks, trains, airplanes, and pipelines. 